welcome. I'm Kritika Saxena. I'm here uh, at Bombay House for a special interview. Uh, Tata Power has had a good year. It's uh, been turbulent time for the power sector as a whole. But I have with me Mr. Anil Sardana to talk about uh, Tata Power's uh, um, FY17 figures, earnings, and a lot more in terms of strategy and what lies ahead for the company. Sure. Yeah, Mr. Sardana, thank you so much for giving, uh, giving us this time exclusively. It's uh, been a good year for you. Absolutely. But before I go into the details and nitty gritties and what lies ahead, GST is the hot subject. Uh, there is going to be a positive impact um, for power companies like yourself. Uh, coal will attract a 5% uh, GST rate. Have you been able to estimate the kind of impact and the cost saving that will come in as a result? of this? Well, for most of the power companies, hmm. coal typically is a pass-through. Yeah. So if at all, it's going to be an advantage to the customers. Hmm. So for us, the advantage will be that we are a distribution company too, hmm. and therefore we look forward to our tariffs becoming better Correct. Uh, over a period of time because now it's down from 11% to 5%. Hmm. But at the same time, while the GST for most of the power items has improved, hmm. What has surprised us is the solar GST. Hmm. That's moved to 18%. Exactly. That yeah. used to be zero. Hmm. So that is a change that hmm. perhaps will make solar more expensive. Yeah. And the worry is that right now, the projects which are in execution stage, hmm. they will have to bear this brunt because uh, the change of law will take a long time yeah. for them to resolve. Hmm. We are fortunate that most of our projects got concluded before 31st March. Okay. So there won't be that much of an impact. So for us, well. as startup power, there won't be an impact. But for bid projects which are not executed, the number is as large as almost 10,000 megawatt. 10,000 megawatt worth of projects being impacted? Solar projects which could Across get Across power sector, not for Tata Power. That's is right. there a portion of this that Tata Power will get impacted no, by? No, Tata Power will not get impacted because okay. most of our projects are concluded before 31st March. Okay. So you indicated that there would be a benefit for customers, uh, for your customers specifically. Um, uh, my first question, are you ready for the 1st July rollout? And secondly, um, uh, the Revenue Secretary was on CNBC yesterday and he had requested that uh, um, corporates must wait till the 1st July turnaround to pass on any effect, negative or positive, to the customers. So what the, would the timeline be? By when would customers see that benefit of tariffs? So first and foremost, uh, we as a company are completely geared up to uh, roll out GST from 1st July. Mm. So we had advisors on board. We have done our changes in the enterprise resource planning softwares. Mm. So we are all set for 1st July. Mm -hmm. Second part that you asked was that when do customers truly see the advantage? Yeah. That will be not until we go to the regulator next time. Okay. So because as way? you know, the tariffs and distributions are all determined by the regulator. So therefore, this cycle will virtually be a cycle that will end up towards the end of this financial year. And then you go to regulator and then you get to okay. see the changes. So by when would you uh, go to not, the regulator? Not until by... 2018 middle. So by 2018 mid, there would be a tariff impact. Uh, yeah. How much would There'll that be? There will be a tariff improvement. Improvement. And if you assume that for coal, it is going to be down from 11 to 5 percent in some of the projects, hmm. the cost could certainly come down by 10 to 15 paise. 10 to 15 uh, paise by mid-2018. That's right. Could that further keep coming down over a period of time after it is executed? Is there a window no, for that? No, no. Because... Uh, if the coal prices increase, hmm. yes, then relative difference yeah. of the GST would hmm. certainly be an advantage. Okay. One has to wait and see as to how other aspects, hmm. other components of what forms the yeah. variable price in terms of not just the coal, but also the ferrying of coal by trucks or by rail system, how would that get impacted? Hmm. Because one has to see on a holistic basis. If that also goes down, hmm. then customer will see bigger advantage. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, let's talk about the earnings. Uh, you've had a good year. Uh, if I had to single out this quarter's performance, there's been a net loss of 247 crore rupees, but that's largely because of an exceptional issue. Um, barring that, it's 389 crore rupees of a profit that you've seen. So, firstly, is there an exceptional item likely? Is there more payout that you have to make in lieu of Tata Docomo um, in the next few quarters? If yes, uh, have you factored that in already? So, first and foremost, as you mm. rightly said, one is that this is Q4. Correct. But the other important part is this is also full year. Yeah. So, when we look at for power sector, we don't look at every quarter because mm. this is a long-term business. Yeah. So, from an annual statement point of view, mm -hmm. while we have provided 650 
odd crores for the Docomo that is hmm. likely to be sort of a payout. Okay. What we have done, we have done two aspects. One is that uh, based on the High Court order, we realize very clearly hmm. that the Docomo payout will happen soon. Yeah. So that is one part that we have provided for. Okay. The other part that we provided... And that's done now. That's there is no more now. provision. Required. There is no need for any more provision. The second part that we did was hmm. that the Docomo uh, impairment, the shares that we will acquire from Docomo, mm -hmm. will get impaired because okay. the pricing is not going to be at the price at which we transact with Docomo. Hmm. Hmm. So therefore, we have even provided for that because hmm. just just for the viewers, hmm. we are buying these shares yeah. as per the agreement that Tata Sons had yeah. at about 58 rupees, which is 50% of the price at which these shares were originally bought by hmm. Docomo. Okay. But hmm. now we have provided in the books at 11 rupees 70 paisa. So we have okay. even impaired okay. the gap between them. So we have completely okay. provided for that hmm. so that that entire thing is taken care of. Okay. So the yearly performance, hmm. if I don't consider the Como, yeah. has been 1,400 crore profit on the console basis, yeah. which is a very good performance considering the fact that we had high coal prices yeah. and we had more pain hmm. at Mundra. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, we'll go about, uh, go into the expansion bit in just a bit. But uh, the one thing that uh, has been important in the last few quarters is the compensatory tariff order by the Supreme Court. Uh, can you break up the impact that... Uh, is likely in the next few quarters. What is the, or can you quantify for me what is the exact impact that you will see and how will you now change your uh, sourcing arrangements? Uh, given the fact that, you know, Indonesia, as far as importing is concerned, is a concern, would you look at uh, geographies like US and Africa, for instance? So, two things. First, yes. you asked about what is the impact yes. of not getting a favorable compensatory order. Yes. The impact will be an under-recovery on the fuel side hmm. at about 60 paisa per kilowatt hour okay. if the present coal prices prevail, hmm. which is quite large because yeah. we generate close to about 27,000 million units from Mundra. Yeah. So therefore, that's a severe impact. Yeah. But as I said, our hedge with the coal prices will work. Okay. So that is the advantage. If Mundra is going to suffer hmm. close to about 700, 800 crore losses, hmm. we will have close to about 650, 700 crore income. Hmm from hmm. coal companies. Correct. So therefore, that natural hedge is going to work. Okay. Hmm. The second part that you said hmm. is in terms of the fact that how uh, hmm. Mundra, uh, to make Mundra situation viable. will yeah. be mitigated by coal. Yeah. So we had earlier, because of the previous order from Aptil, hmm. a restriction that we must only buy coal from Indonesia. Correct. Now, since we have no such restrictions and everything yeah. that had to happen has played out, hmm. We are now free to buy coal from wherever we believe we can get hmm. more competitive options. In fact, since the time the order come, hmm. we have already uh, have? Okay. spotted coal in African shores, okay. which is going to come at much higher discounts okay. than What's you can normally get. What's the kind of discount get. that you're working with right so, now? For reasons hmm. of non-disclosure, okay. I can't okay. talk about those numbers today. Hmm. But yes, those are at a higher discount, okay. which will mitigate a lot of under-recovery that I'm talking hmm. about from Mundra. So, Africa is one option, US is one option, Absolutely. any other areas across? Even South America is another America. option because okay. Colombia has a lot of good quality coal. What about domestic coal sourcing? Is that so an option? Domestic coal is now an option as yeah. you have seen the linkage policy the that has been announced yeah. last week. Hmm. Uh, however, the uh, contours of that and the rules related to that are yet to be announced. Yeah. But it will be an auction system which hmm. will be very transparent. And so you are open to bidding uh, oh, for uh, high-grade domestic coal. Uh, we we'll look at all those options okay. from time to time. Hmm. Today, as it stands, hmm. even with the prices that prevail, hmm. domestic coal is not a competitive option for us. Hmm. The cost of coal that we are able to get from Indonesia and from other sources through shipping hmm. arrangement is much cheaper than getting the coal through long haul. Because hmm. as you know, coal if taken from the eastern coast, hmm. whether it comes by all sea route yeah. or it comes by all, all rail route, is going to be more expensive to Mundra mm. than the options that we get from Indonesia or yeah. from other sources. Mm. This is particularly because mm. shipping is at the lowest price today. Yeah. Globally, shipping offers the most competitive pricing today. And that's mm. the reason why today, at this stage, I would say imported coal prices are way well, too more competitive right compared now. to domestic coal. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, let me ask about uh, debt. You've uh, maintained... Uh, 
uh, a debt target of two, if I'm correct. What is the timeline that you're giving to yourself? Uh, by how much can we look at bringing down debt? Can you give me uh, some figures as to what you're working with in terms of a 2018 or even a 2020 target for that matter? Okay, let me start by saying the normative debt levels for this mm. sector are 2.33. Yeah. Since we are From a debt to equity ratio. That's right. Yeah. 2.33 as the hmm. debt to equity ratio. Hmm. Since we have gone higher, hmm. when we particularly did the large acquisition last year, hmm. we did that through debt instrument. Yeah. We did not uh, yeah. have any equity from shareholders at that time. Hmm. So during the current year, our plan is that hmm. we will do two things. One, try and dispose of hmm. non-core assets, yeah. which are there for a long time that we had retained within ourselves, try and see as to what we can fetch out. Hmm. There are other options that we are also exploring, hmm. which we'll tend to do during the 2018 hmm. period itself. What are the options, for instance? Uh, there can be a lot of options. You can always go hmm. back to shareholders. You can hmm. explore options in terms hmm. of how you can, uh, you know, look at the other assets that exist within the system hmm. as to what structuring options you pursue. So would that include reducing cross-holding across group companies? That, that is something that has been discussed. That's not my subject. That's okay. subject of Tata Sons. Okay, but I hear the current new chairman talk about that more often. Okay. So, um, so that's the agenda that they will pursue. Okay. But as far as the company is concerned, it look at its non-core assets. Hmm. It look at its other core assets where okay. it believes it can get value for money hmm. and we will therefore look at those options to try and go below the normative level of the okay. sector okay. and go below 2.33. So how much for instance you said FI18s how much could you raise or bring down debt by how much if you were looking at a fresh issue for instance what is One the... is the straight portion of 4000 crore that Correct. we used yeah. to acquire the large solar assets hmm. that we have to forego the moment hmm. you do that you are already below a very respectable number hmm. and besides that we are looking at another about 50 percent of that amount hmm. coming from non-core assets and therefore hmm. we should be able to get below 2.33 okay which are the non-core assets uh, that can be sold off right now i see you smiling i think uh, that's there in our balance sheet shareholders know about it huh. these are various uh, telecommunication assets Correct. there are many similar assets hmm. and those are the ones we'll certainly look at during the year Okay, fair enough. Um, is debt restructuring, refinancing also something that you're looking at to bring down interest costs right now? So that in any case is an agenda for Mundra. Uh, that we have so Mundra debt will be restructured? Because we will restructure the Mundra debt. Okay. Particularly uh, uh, there is foreign debt that we have yeah. and at this stage we find it more uh, competitive. Hmm. Uh, particularly because Lenders mm. clearly understand that Tata Power mm. will repay every yeah. every ounce of the debt. Mm. Uh, we have been paying Mundra debt. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very interesting that mm. over a period of last four or five years, mm. we have paid a larger portion of Indian debt already, already. including foreign debt. So okay. uh, what we had in terms of 14,000 crore mm. is already down to 10,000 crore. So we mm. have already paid 4,000 crore of debt. Hmm. So we will try and restructure the hmm. international debt to much lower Indian competitive rates mm -hmm. and try and should schedule it for longer hmm. periods so that the initial periods hmm. will see much lesser uh, sort of debt burden on the company. Okay. Is an IPO of the renewable energy business also on one of the options in the agenda? Not to my knowledge. Not yet. Okay. No. We, we have acquired this business. Yeah. We are now trying to bring all the renewable business hmm. from the parent company and elsewhere into one vehicle, which is Tata Power Renewable Correct. Energy Limited. Correct. We have become the largest. Today, exactly. we have more than 2,200 megawatt of operating renewables hmm. and more than 3,100 hmm. megawatt of green uh, uh, power, which is operating. Hmm. And uh, close to about 500 megawatt is additionally under construction. So hmm. we are by far the largest. Okay. Our idea is to grow that into a critical mass hmm. before we look at any next set of options. All right, we'll take a very short break on that note. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Lots more with Anil Sandana on the other side.